I, on my page here, it's written that our next, uh, our next presenter is Greedizer, which I happen to know is not true. In fact, I suspect that they are quite the opposite. Our next company is Greendizer, and it is from both Paris and Casablanca. So come on out, guys. Um, I'm Mohamed Atari, and this is Amin Azariz, and we're here to introduce you to Greendizer. Um, and what Greendizer is, it's a company, a company all about e-invoicing. Um, but first, let me give you a few numbers you know, about our market and uh, why we are in the in invoicing business. Well, first, this number, which is pretty huge, 36 billion, this is the number of invoices that are produced every year in Europe. Uh, it's pretty amazing, but what's most, um, even more and even better in this is that over the next six years, e-invoicing is expected to save Europe more than 238 billion euros, which is extraordinary. But with all this interest and zillion of companies that have been working on e-invoicing and trying to improve, improve the, this market over maybe the last 10 years or even more, uh, we are only at a rate of 5 to 10% of invoices in Europe. And the United States are, are even, you know, like are, are even way behind this, actually, which is pretty surprising because usually you guys are way first. Uh, so what we think is there is a problem on this market. It's huge. It has a lot of interests, but most people, you know, can't make it, and we don't know really why. Well, we've tried to work on this, and we've noticed that there's simply uh, room for disruption here. This is what. Greendizer is trying to do here, disrupt this market and invent something that didn't happen before. Uh, so very simply, what we're trying to do is to aggregate all invoices into the same place. Uh, let me show you how it looks like. I don't have enough time, basically. Well, uh, this is your interface uh, from uh, what we call a buyer's uh, perspective, uh, someone who has received those invoices. And what you see is that it's very familiar to anyone who has ever used email. It was very important for us. The email paradigm works very good for if you receive only 10 invoices per day or 100, which is great. And we try to really customize your interface to uh, get all the data that you need about invoices uh, right on the face, actually. And if you go, you know, you have everything that you could expect, uh, which is uh, read, unread. You can flag them, you know, to find them back uh, very quickly. Uh, we've tried to build in a lot of stuff. You have indicators, you know, it's in red because it has to be paid today. And if I don't do, do it, you know, I'm, maybe I'm going to have late fees. Uh, you can actually message your, uh, your sellers. You can have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a whole set of communication with them so that you have only green dizer to communicate with your sellers. You don't need to go to another website, find a phone number or anything else. Everything is here. It's uh, the only channel of communication that you're going to need. I'm not going to take too much time on this, you know, because we, we have a lot to see I and mean, we have a lot to tell. So let me get back to this presentation. And take F5 is, well, I'm going to have to do it all over again. I'm sorry. And, okay, now we're on it. The second point after this is that when we build this aggregator, we noticed and we simply realized that the world doesn't need another dump aggregator. Everyone is doing this. Every other solution is trying to do the same. So we try to go further and we try to structure that data. We want the invoices to make sense. We think invoices are uh, the most undervalued and uh, underestimated documents ever made. You can basically know anything you want by analyzing those invoices. So we use a standard that's already, that's already in use today, which is basically XML, which is very extensible. And we, we, now we just throw up every other standard that we used to be before. And with this, we have tried to build a pre-calculation engine that could allow any company today to do all the pre-calculations that they need to build a wide range of, of possible applications. So what are those applications? Uh, it could be something to automate your accountancy. It could be something to, uh, you built Greendizer right in, into a CRM, for instance. Uh, you could build a whole dashboard, and let me show you a lot of examples about this. And using the API that we have used ourselves to build our own product, what I've, see, what I've uh, just showed you right now, you could have really amazing stuff. 
check this out. This is a dashboard that can be built using Green Dizer. Uh, you make calls to our API, and we can analyze sales. We can, you can link this to your, to your stock and know what, what, how many, many products that you have left in stock. Uh, we can have you know, a lot of stuff that we didn't just didn't put here, like your VAT, how much taxes you owe right at the, at the specific moment. Which, what is great about this is that it's entirely made for small and medium businesses, because those guys don't have the money to invest in really expensive software. And what's great about Green Desert is it's completely free. Uh, we have just another example, you know, which is a mock-up of a CRM that we've tried to make. And this just shows uh, what, something else that's possible and the kind of innovation that we want to see being built on top of Green Desert using the API that we're giving to, to great. all developers. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Green Desert. What do you think? Uh, judges, questions for the team? First, is, are you using an existing XML standard for invoices? There are a lot of standards about invoices. We have created our own, uh, which is you know like very basic. It describes an invoice, and we, what you think about, which is great about in, uh, XML, is that it's very extensible. People can add their own data, we store it for them, and they can retrieve it anytime they want. And we only use the required parameters that we required in the beginning. So integrating it with a third-party software product. Uh, well, we can write plugins because what's great about uh, an API is this. Actually, you can uh, write a plugin for any accountancy software, for instance. But what we'd like people to do is basically write specific software for our platform and use that open data, which is XML, which is great. Which is great. What's great about XML is that it's readable, human readable, it's portable, which is pretty great, actually. How do you expect to make money? Well, we have a lot of ideas about this. Well, first, uh, we have payment, which is built in. And we take commissions on the bills that are going to be paid through our platform. Uh, what's great about this is that we have been able to have very low rates because we have hi higher volumes. And for those small and medium businesses, they're going to have much lower price than if they went to negotiate themselves uh, rates with those people. And who do you expect to be your sort of early adopter customers, and why do they want it? Well, we are building a lot of uh, partnerships with web agencies and uh, web developers because those guys usually focus on applications, on the core uh, features of their applications, and they forget about invoicing, which is a very important part. And they only realize that they forget to really work on it afterwards. So we have partnerships with agencies, and we think a lot, a lot of startups that want to you know, just start doing business from a day to another that needs this kind of solutions that are really built in and just... You, you plug them, and they're ready to use. Uh, I guess my observation, uh, which I guess is in part a question, yeah. is that it seems to me that, at least if I understand this, it's largely a platform. And I think that one of the things... Didn't it's, hear you. it's largely a platform. It's largely a platform. Right. Yes. And I think that the applications are going to matter. And yes, it's good to have an open ecosystem. But you're going to want some applications that are very compelling mm -hmm. that show the power of that platform yes. to really get people engaged with it. Yes. Because otherwise, you know, a platform without a wonderful showcase app that shows what it can do, a lot of times you know, doesn't really get off the ground. So what, what do you think some of the key applications should be? And think, which of those will you build? Yeah, I, I think the first key application that you, people are going to be uh, wanted to see is the one we built. It's built on top of that API, and it's, it uses that data to build a whole new experience over it. Uh, there are a lot of stuff that I couldn't show you because of the time, but you have like um, dashboards that uh, help you to manage your budgets. Uh, you can manage your expensive, you can group uh, those, the, those data, and can be done all automatically. The other kind of applications that we think is going to be really interesting is uh, the dashboard that I showed you. Uh, and I think it's great for any company to be able, from a day to another, to have such a great uh, tool available, you know, like this with no, no programming, no developing, and at a very low fee. I, I really um, try to uh, convince some developers, you know, to write this kind of applications that are going to be really uh, low rate. Could you present us your team? Yes, uh, we are three. Uh, this is uh, Amin, our CDO. 
uh, a, a, a full engineer. We have another uh, another another one of us, which is uh, who is in Morocco right now for business because we're trying to uh, we're signing some contracts with some kind of customers, uh, which is uh, which is, uh, he's done a business call basically, and I am. Uh, like in between of both because I've done a business call but I also program and so we've been working technically both on this for, for this time. I mean this largely revolves around adoption in terms of the platform. How are you going to get this to be the standard? Because without it being a standard if I get half my invoices in through one platform and half through another and a few auto I mean EDI is 20 years ago and it failed so spectacularly why is yours going to be different? I think it's uh, it, the, it, we, we should not try to impose or have a standard. We just have something that works pretty well. It's XML, and what's great about XML is it's already a standard. We're not trying to convince people to get you know data format that didn't didn't exist before. And XML, uh, you know, what's really uh, it's not costly to write. Uh, uh, data transformers, you know, and to convert data from one set to another. It's not expensive at all. And the fact that we're open, it, it might, might encourage people actually to trust this, uh, this platform and be able to take their data and maybe take it uh, somewhere else. We're open. Our competitors can maybe import your data from Windizer if you want so. So don't try to have a standard. We have a format that we think works. If something else appears and it's better, maybe you're going to take it too. So I, we think the it's not the format of the data. It's where I put my data, and, and why should I put my data where you are? Where we are, because we think we are the only one that uh, offer a platform that's open today, which is a, a very compelling solution for most people because you are not going to be imprisoned in it. We have those applications. You know, we have another one for sellers. You know, I didn't really have time to show you that, but those applications really make your life easier. Think about small and medium businesses. Uh, people that are usually use Excel to do their invoices or Microsoft Word even. And this can allow them to really uh, you know, manage that flow of invoices that come and it's so much easier. So this is our first step and we're free for them. All right, thank you Green Dizer. You figured out one of the keys to startup success, which is good t-shirts. So thank you for that.